Yeah, well, that's, uh, and, the, and the other six of you, we're glad you're here at the church today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, Al, uh, Alvin, you in the balcony, I'll be looking at you and the other six of you, and uh, we'll be having a great time today. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, I had a son like that. <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay. We'll get you on the evangelic field soon enough. Okay. Um, now, what, a dedication is, um, it's scriptural, number one, okay? We don't christen babies because um, their will's not involved. You know, we're sprinkling kids and saying, okay, you're okay. You have to be involved with this walk with Jesus, Right? The only thing I can find in the Bible that we can do with kids is Hannah, she prayed and said, Lord, if you give me a child, I will dedicate him all the days of his life. So I believe in dedication. Now, even though Eve, bless her heart, wherever, where is the little one? She's up there. Before y'all come up here, she's clueless of what's going on today. So what is, what is this about today? This is about praying for mom and dad to have wisdom. How many of you got to have wisdom? I got it, bro. Hang on. Uh, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> uh, and we're going to have the, grand, the, the grandparents come up and the family, which will be probably th two-thirds of the church today, which is fine. Which is fine because every, all y'all that come up, you're, you're showing that you're in support of the, this child. But also, we're acknowledging you have a responsibility. This idea of, well, when my kid's 18, I'm done, they're on their own. That's not in the Bible. Uh, most of them don't leave anyway, so you better, <laughs> you better figure out how you can do this together in peace. But uh, it's, 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 our, it's, it's my job as a father to train up my children in the way that they should go. Um, it's my dad, my job my job as a grandfather to make sure that my kids are t doing that doing it right with the with the, the next generation so we we have a work to do here y'all and uh, children are the the heritage of the Lord how many of God loves kids some of you going yeah he loved me when I was little now that I'm old oh, he's I'm a booger he loves you even more hallelujah but he loves kids so if we can get Mom and Dad and Eve to come up here and the grandparents and uh, uh, if, if y'all just stand right kind of over here because I want to stand up because y'all are taller than me and I don't want to be a voice <laughs> mumbling behind y'all. Any, any more family members, uh, brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles? If, if you're part of this family... Uh, then you're going to have, you're going to be asked at times to babysit so mom and dad can get a night out. I mean, oh, that's important. They haven't, they haven't, they haven't had one in a while. So uh, just FYI. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're going to try to keep her happy. And uh, all right, Father God, we bring, we bring this assembly <laughs> of people, moms and dads, uncles and aunts, grandpa and grandma. We bring all of us before your throne today, Father. And we acknowledge this precious life that you've given Matthew and Marcia. Lord, we acknowledge Eve, Lord. What a cool name. The beginning. Lord, so I just... And her middle name's Michelle, which is the feminine for Michael. And I'm, I thank you for that tagging me in there. <laughs> but that, that Michael means who is like unto the Lord. Lord, I pray, pray that little Eve will grow up and proclaim the goodness of the Lord all the days of her life. Father, I lay hands on mom and dad right now and I just impart wisdom beyond your years. It takes wisdom to raise children because this world's never been in the shape it's in right now. And there's so much strife outside the home. That's why your home's got to be a sanctuary. Father, I pray angels of God would encamp round about Matthew's house and that Eve will grow up in Marcia's house. That Eve will grow up in a loving home and environment. 
that strife will be far, far kept away from them. That the love of God will flow through my... The best thing you two can do for your daughter is love each other. When children are raised in a home of love, it breeds security and comfort and confidence. Lord, I thank you that Eve's going to have a good, strong sense of who she is because the seals of the Father are going to be set in her life. Her daddy's going to tell her all the days of her life how beautiful she is, how loved she is, how cared for, how, how that they appreciate. And they're going to take ownership. They're going to say, we, 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 we made you. <laughs> we don't ever want to get rid of you. We love you. And she's going to grow up in that environment. And insecurity will be an enemy that's far driven far away from her all the days of her life. Thank you for security and confidence and peace. That this little child is going to grow up and be a light to all her little friends. Even in, even in the early days around little other children, she's going to, the love and light of God is going to flow through her. Jesus, we can know you. You said suffer the little children to come to you. We can all know you at any age. So, Lord, I thank you that Eve is going to know you from, her, from this day forward. And you're going to reveal yourself to her. And she's going to grow up in, with a knowledge of who Jesus is from her childhood, from her youth. The Bible says, remember the Lord in the days of your youth. And I thank you this child will. Father, give Mama the grace and patience and every virtue that's needed to, to be the nurturing part of her life, that she'll pour in nurture and love. Lord, bless the grandparents. Their job's not over. God, that you would continue to give... Uh, Matthew's dad wisdom to keep imparting to him and Lord we just love this family and love look at all the support father I thank you heaven is, is, has been generous to this little girl so Lord we just bless everyone involved in, in the in, in the relationship that's tied to Marcia and Matthew and in this child and that Eve is going to be loved all the days of her life and she is going to be secure in Christ our true identity comes from Jesus anyways. That she will never be insecure, but be secure in the love of God all the days of her life. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You did good, little bit. Little bit. You did good. Yeah. All right. Jason, come here. You and your sweet thing. What's her name? Carly? Carly. Y'all just got engaged, didn't you? That is, that is correct. Well, let me pray for you. The Bible says, he that finds a wife, that's the intent, right? Get engaged. And, I that, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going for it. Yeah. He that finds a wife finds a what? A good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. She going to give you favor with God. It took something. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, I want to tell you something. I, want to, I just felt like the Lord told me to pray for you too. Cause, uh, and to bless this. Because see, your courtship, now, when, you got a date set yet? Yeah. Okay. Oh, come on. But it, okay, in the next eight or nine months, we're going to believe that, that, that this, through this courtship, you guys, your heart's going to become one. That, that your vision for what the purpose of God in your life, that she, she can adapt to that. That she's, yeah, I, no surprises. I said, no surprises. How many of y'all want to get married? You want to, you want to get married in light? Yeah, you know, I didn't see that about you. <laughs> I didn't know you. I didn't know you. So, no surprises. So, I'm, I really feel like the Lord's going to, in the next uh, seven, eight months, He's going to really do some cool things in both y'all that's going to take you. You're, I know you guys are already, woo, doo, 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 you already got, you got that going on, but but get past that and get, get into the deep stuff where you actually tap into her heart and you see the value that Christ sees in her and the, and the vision and purpose that, you know, God has a plan for your life too. And uh, that God would do, that y'all would become one. And I know people have married for, for decades and never achieved oneness, okay? This is, it's really a, a thing of the spirit to, to make you two one. So, God, I just pray for these two right now. I pray, God, that through this courtship, their love will grow unto a level they never believed possible. 
I know they think right now, she thinks I can't love him anymore. I love him with all my heart, and he feels the same way. But Lord, there's a depth of your love we don't even, can't even, we can't even scratch the surface of the depth and breadth of the love of God. Lord, let this couple be such an example to other young people. Nobody wants to get married anymore because they're so fearful of, of divorce and everything else. But Father, I, I say this, this marriage will prosper. And Father, I say divorce will never come nigh its dwelling. I thank you, Lord, that they will be a light, a lighthouse to other young couples that will see if this is what marriage is, sign me up. Because there's a depth of love that comes through a covenant that will, doesn't come from just living together. So, Lord, I pray that you bless this, this union, and I thank you, Lord, that from this day forward, it's going to go to another level, and love and joy and happiness and peace is going to flow like a river through these two, and it's going to be awesome. And we just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You got a good one, buddy. Amen. Well, I feel good all over more than anywhere else right now. <laughs> all right. Um, if you're going to Sunday school, Brenda's teaching today. And today it's uh, how to take a Big Mac and multiply it and feed 5,000. It's going to be... <laughs> I know. I keep telling you, babe, I move in a realm you don't get. Um, has anybody got a cough drop? Anybody got a, is there one back there, Dave? Uh, okay, okay. All these purses in the room, ain't one? Huh? Uh, tic Tac won't work. Huh? Uh, I knew. All right. What do you got? Ricola! Huh. Now, this is a, this is a Halls? It's the right brand. Oh, I got choices. All right. Uh, this is Ricola. That's a little too radical. I want to be able to. <laughs> I want to be able to read the Bible here in a little bit. And some of these things are strong. All right. The well, Lord is good, isn't He? Well, five of y'all believe it. I, I want to tell you to the rest of y'all, He's good. Hallelujah. Anybody this week been uh, battling a little bit of blues? All right, three of you. The rest of y'all are lying. So. <laughs> Uh, quit lying. You should not lie in the house of God. If you're going to lie, go outside and tell yourself whatever you want to believe. But I want to tell you something. The title of this message is called, It Ain't Over. And I said ain't because I'm a southern man and that's a good word. Right. It ain't over yet. I'm, I, we've been saying for um, a couple years now, the Bible says, believe his, believe his prophets and you'll prosper. In the book of Amos. Believe his prophets and you'll prosper. Um... So, I believe that God said we're going to get four more years. Yeah, but they've already counted the votes. It don't look like it's going to happen. It ain't over. Right. Trump is still president. And, uh, and if some of y'all don't like Trump, then you're probably at the wrong place today. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry for you. But uh, the Bible says, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So, if so you endure this, you'll be okay. But I want to tell you that, you know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you read these stories and you think that these, this happened to other, you know, these were stories that happened to other people. But, you know, we're still in Bible days. The same God that parted the waters still does that today. The same God that makes a way where the Bible says there don't seem to be a way, he makes a way where there don't seem to be one. You know, God is notorious for showing up right at the last minute. I mean, that's who he is. That's how he, that's, he does that. So you and I have to stay in this thing called faith, where we have to keep believing him. And you don't just believe when you first get saved and then you go on autopilot. You have to keep believing him. When the Israelites got to the, to the Red Sea, I mean, they were a little freaked out. Oh, great, there's an ocean here. And their enemies come and breathing down our back and there's mountains on both sides. Well, isn't this, isn't this convenient? I mean, it kind of looked like Moses didn't know how he, what he was doing. He was leading them below. Did you not see this ocean you was drink, bringing us to? God brought them there for a purpose. So they would be still. It says, be still and see the salvation of God. 
You know, if you're going to become president, you just have to do it the legal way. And you got to, the votes got to be valid votes. And I think I'm going to tell you something, body of Christ. There are things, do we not know that there is corruption going on that on levels we don't even have? I'm going to tell you something. There's darkness out there. There's levels of darkness I don't even want to know about. There's a thing called the dark web, and it's called that because you don't want to go there. The level of human trafficking in America. People's all, all freaked out about slavery. Guess what? It's still going on. Millions of young girls every year. Hello? That's called slavery when you're making people do something against their will. So, and just bear with me. I just, this is for me if nobody else. Because I've been, yesterday, yesterday I was not a lot of fun. I was not having, I, you know when you're, when you're with you, you're with you. And it's hard to get away from you when you're, because you're stuck with you. And, and if you're not having a good day and you're kind of fighting the blues and every time you turn on your phone, you're getting some little thing popping up. Nah, 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 nah. It's like, oh. <laughs> you know, I don't even have those apps. I'm not even subscribed to those people. Why do they, you know, it's like, this is demonic. <laughs> But, you know what? God is God no matter who's in the White House. I want to tell you something. I'm, I'm believing that God, my life's going to be okay regardless of what happens. But there, I'm fearful of some people that don't know God because uh, there's some things, there's wickedness. How many of Satan is the ultimate? It all goes back to him. All right. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8, it says, we speak the wisdom among those who are mature. Now, if you're not mature, you won't get much out of what I'm talking about today because you'll look at me and go, whatever. But this is for the mature. Does he take mature sons and daughters aren't freaked out by what they see because we walk by faith, not by sight. And we see God, we've seen God do so many things. I've seen people, the doctor told them, call the family, and they don't have a month to live, and they've lived, and 15 years later, they're still around. I've seen God make ways where there don't seem to be a way. He's, he's God. He's good at that. All right, so we, we speak the wisdom to those that are mature, not, not the wisdom of this age or of, this, of the world nor are the rulers of this age or the, this world. How I many of there's powers out there that well, you can't see them, but that don't mean they're not there. The angels out there, whether you see them or not, they're around. Anybody ever seen an angel? I have. Yeah, they, they, they don't show up much. That's why none of y'all didn't raise your hand. I don't see them on a, on a regular basis, but I've seen them. But I believed in them before I saw them. When you get to heaven and you go to the library and you get your video, you know, my call, and you watch it and you're going to see angels, because then, then, then the spirit room will be revealed to you and you'll see the angels that, whoop, whoop, pay attention, moved your car when you were reaching for a cassette or whatever, or doing, I dated myself, you know, <laughs> an eight track, you know, <laughs> and your car's going off the road, some angel's going, okay, 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 okay. And because and we think we're all good drivers. You know, they say on any given Friday night, every, about every fourth or fifth car passing you has been drinking. So lots of people out there drinking. It's not about how you, how well you are at driving. My wife drives a lot nowadays because I found that that's the best way it works for us. I like to look around. I'm a shepherd. It's natural for me to just always be checking out the flock. And uh, I find when I look, my car goes where I'm looking. So I'm kind of all over the road. We have no Christian stickers on our cars. You've noticed that? <laughs> yeah, how come you don't? Because we've got to pay more attention. I don't want people judging Jesus on my bad driving. <laughs> and you that have stickers on your car, you better be focused when you drive because people are judging Jesus if you're all over the road. Honk, if you love Jesus, how about you just pay attention? How about give Jesus the wheel, like the song says? <laughs> All right. So those rulers of, the rulers of this age, they don't get it, who are coming to nothing. I don't want you to hear that. 
How many of the rulers of this age, Satan and all his cohorts, they're coming to nothing? Last I heard, they end up in a pit. It's not a good place. We win. I don't know if y'all have read the end of the book. We win. And we do live happily ever after. And that's coming up quicker than most of us believe. All right. So the princes of this world, the powers of this world, you know, the Bible says Satan is the prince of the power of the airways. I mean, he controls media. To, to, to the mature, they're going, oh, yeah. And, um, the devil has a radio station? He has all radio stations. <laughs> oh, all right, come on. Uh, which none of the rulers of this world knew. Uh, I'm skipping a verse. But verse 8 says, um, which none of the rulers of this world knew, had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If Satan knew that in crucifying Jesus, he would have paved the road to salvation for you and me, he would have let him alone. How I many of oh, Satan always overplays his... You know why he overplays himself? Because he is Leviathan. He is the king of pride. You ever met people that are prideful? They think that whatever they do is the right thing. I mean, we got some people in politics a little bit in pride right now. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. And you can't touch me because I'm, I'm a senator. I'm a congressman. I'm whatever. And, you know, how I many of oh, God is a God of righteousness? He's a God of justice. How I many of oh, we need to see justice? In how I many of oh, we haven't seen justice in a long time? There was a kid named Justice I saw a few weeks ago. We ain't seen the real thing. Amen? But, you know, we need to see that Lady Justice, who wears that little thing over her eyes with the scale, see, she's not supposed to be looking at your status. She's not supposed to see what you drove up to the courthouse in. She's not supposed to look at your bank account. None of that should have anything to do with if you, if you, were, if you did something wrong, it's wrong. And we've seen for a long time there's not equality in this country. But see, with God there is. Right. We sing about it. All our national anthems have all sing about how it's all fair, but it hasn't been that way in a long time. But you know what I love about God? And some of, listen, some of this stuff is not going to get... If you think I think Trump's going to fix everything, I don't. I just think he's going to make it easier for guys like me. You know, preaching the gospel is difficult. Because people are hard-headed, present company excluded. <laughs> but people are hard-headed. Regardless, you know, we're, because we're not filled to capacity, we can, we can get by doing this. But there are powers that be that if they get in office, they'll shut all this down. You won't be able to assemble. And they'll ride this COVID thing out for years. There's some powers out there that are not doing things for the good of the people. There's a lot of mom and pop places here in town that have gone out of business and they're not coming back. Some of them, I've been going to some of the restaurants around here. I've been here 35 years and some of them, they're landmarks and they're gone out of business. See, Jesus cares about that mom and pop shop. If Satan had known the wisdom of God, which he doesn't, he wouldn't do the, some of the things he does. I want to tell you what I believe with all my heart. I believe there's a level of corruption right now that's about to be manifested. But it has to get down. To, it's going to end up in the courts. It's in a lot of stuff. Because if your vote don't count, then you're going to quit voting. And then we just give up. I, I don't want democracy to die on my watch. So I have a word for us today. And it's called, it ain't over. <laughs> so you that came in here feeling kind of, oh, you should not leave that way. You should leave believing. I want you to keep believing. And See, right now we got to stay in faith. We got to keep believing what God, that God's not finished. That it will go to courts. They will, they will and the, peop, the powers that be will search and find dumpsters full of things. How many other stuff out there hidden? We just ain't found it yet. But don't look like there, there's that much evidence. Well, you know, people that are crooks don't try to leave a trail of it around for people. They're not like, let's rob the bank and these, let's leave dollars so they can find us. No, it's all about secret, lies, darkness. But Jesus is going to turn the light on. We got a harvest to bring in. 
It's been prophesied over a billion people are coming in before Jesus comes back. A billion people. That's a lot of folks. And you know what? We, we need some. It's hard enough just getting people to see the truth, let alone with all kind of legalities and stuff that are making it difficult for us to get together. Right. See, some people aren't thinking that way. But I'll tell you what. Satan is the king of pride. He's a liar. Liar! Jesus said, every time you open your mouth, devil, you're lying. When people come to me, Brother Mike, pray for me. The devil's been telling me. Whatever they're about to say is a lie. They've been telling me I ain't saved. Well, that's a lie. Flip it. You got the truth. I'm saved. There you go. Telling me God's mad at me. Flip it. God's not mad at me. If you say the devil's been telling me, it's amazing how we can hear the devil's voice. We can't hear God's voice. <laughs> Satan's a liar. He's a deceiver. And he's lying to folks right now. And there's people right now going, okay, we give it our best shot. I voted. That's all I can do. That's, I, I voted. And if you didn't vote, you, you just shut your mouth. You ain't, got, you ain't got a horse in this race. You don't need this. You know, I was counting on a lot, of, a lot of young people not voting, but it looks like some of them did. Okay, look at me with that. that I love you, Brother Mike. Look. Now here's what I want you to see. This is important. In Isaiah, in Isaiah, I want to tell you something. As a country, we cannot continue to do the stuff we're doing and get away with it. Right. You can't kill 60 million babies and God just <whistles> look the other way. God says six things I hate, the seventh is an abomination. And the first one on the list is hands that shed innocent blood. You, it don't get no more innocent than the womb. It's amazing that when they're working on people at the hospital, when do they pronounce them dead? Not when they're brain dead. They used to have them on machines and stuff. It's when the heart quits beating. But you know, why won't they say they're, they're living when the heart, you know, is beating? Because that's one of the first things you can hear when a woman gets pregnant. I mean, it's, it develops almost right away. Well, we've been doing this for, I want to tell you something. I hope I live to see the day that Roe versus Wade gets turned over. And I am, I am not being politically correct. So if you that came for a di baby dedication, you may have to endure for a little bit. Or you could get up and leave if you have to, because I realize some of this is hard for some people. But I'm going to tell you something. God is a loving God, and he's a merciful God. He's an awesome God. And every life matters. Every life matters, and especially babies. And we got to fight for him. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something about the devil. I mean, he's a dirt ball. Oh, shit. That was a great place to amen right there. I'll just read. I'm going to do that again. Hey, guess what? The devil's a dirt ball. Yeah, he is. He's a dirt ball. He's the, I want you to understand who the devil is. He's the guy that when drunk, a drunk driver's out there driving and he hits a minivan and kills everybody in the car. He's on the side of the road going, yes! See, that's the devil. He hates people. Why? Because God made us. We're made in his likeness and image. He hates you. Well, maybe he'll, I'm praying he'll get saved. Those are wasted prayers. Because he's an angel. There's no grace for angels. If angels, if angels sin, it's over. Some of y'all think when you die, you become an angel. That would be a decrease. Angels get one shot at it. And it's only happened once in the entire history. And a third of the angels were... were and Satan's really good at deceiving. He deceived a third of the angels. And they were kicked out of heaven. And that's been... Now those that kicked got fell out of heaven, they've been messing up ever since. But the two-thirds that stayed... They're righteous. They're awesome. They're powerful. Some of them are as big as 747s. They're huge. They're warring angels. There's messengers. See, some of y'all think, you think ba angels, you think little babies in uh, diapers with little wings on the back, Cupid. You know, Satan wants you to think that because that, that, who's afraid of, look, a baby with a... No. Angels are mighty warriors. And they answer to God. And they don't 
when God sends them on an assignment, they don't come back and say, we tried. They don't come back till it's accomplished. I love that about them. They ain't like you and me. Well, I gave them my best shot. I prayed 10 minutes. 10 minutes? You know, Jesus is still saying today, you couldn't tarry one hour. This is, oh, listen, I'm trying to get the, get that thing inside you that's made in the likeness and image of God. I'm trying to pour gas on that thing today. I'm trying to get you a little bit rowdy. Just a little bit on the rowdy side. <laughs> I want you walking out of here in Eye of the Tiger today. Boom, 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 boom. Adrian! <laughs> that's... If you don't do that, then I fail. But I want you, you know, I don't want you to be the, the, the rocky running down the beach and halfway he gives up and he's walking down the beach and Apollos and y'all have seen the movie, right? I do, I do movies because most of y'all seen movies and most of y'all haven't read this book, but a lot of y'all have seen movies. And Apollo goes, this is, uh, tells Adrian, I don't get, he's, he's not trying. And Adrian, God bless a godly woman, she goes and starts talking to Rocky. You saw it. What's going on, Rocky? I'm sorry. He goes, all right, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. You broke me down. And she goes, we're all afraid, Rocky. We're all afraid. Deal with it. And then she gives that woman talk. I'm going to tell you something. A good woman can talk to a man and fire him up. And she did. And boy, howdy, after she gets done with her little two-minute speech, boom, 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 boom. Man, he's in the gym. He's... Say, when you leave today, I want you going, I'm going to start praying. I ain't giving up. It ain't over. Hey, I heard that somewhere. It ain't over. Not till January 20th. Huh? Hello? If in January 20, Biden puts his hand on the Bible and he's the next president, at that point, I will start praying for him. Because he will be the president. Till now, I'm going to pray for Trump. Because I want to make sure that he's supposed to be there, if he is. If he lost, he lost. But I'll tell you something. If he lost because he was cheated out of it, then that, that ain't right. Hallelujah. I'm take it, this is what I want you to see. In Isaiah chapter 10, listen to this scripture. Tell me this don't sound like the devil. By my strength, my hand, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent. Listen to this. Also, I have removed the boundaries of the people. And I have robbed their treasuries. Does that sound like Satan? Do you think he's removed the boundaries? How many know in a marriage there's boundaries? When you marry Carly, you're going to make a vow to her that you're going to keep yourself to her and her only. And she's going to make the same vow. Because if you ever break that, in the eyes of God, the covenant's broke. So you're entering to, into something that's special. Only you two. And it's between a man and a woman. I mean, that's a boundary. The Bible says don't remove the ancient landmarks. Brother, for Hundreds, centuries, it's been men and women getting married and producing children. Because two women can't produce a child, nor two can two men. Hello? See, we reproduce after our own kind. God ordained marriage. He ordained the family. And they removed boundaries. I mean, oh... Gender is a boundary. My Lord, for 6,000 years, we've been pulling babies out and saying, it's a boy, it's a girl. And that's really the only two choices. People are naming their kids Rainbow and Hawkwing and stuff because they don't want to give it a gender. My son's name, well, let's call him Purple so when he get, until he gets older he can figure it out. How, how does, people are hearing that and that, we're acting like that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Where did common sense go? I'm thinking about opening a school of common sense. I'll probably become a millionaire because in California, it's lacking. Hey, I'm getting wet out here. Well, you might want to get an umbrella. Man, you're so smart. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. 
I keep getting tickets from running those signs with those, the red ones on the corner. Yeah, you might want to stop at those. Man, I'm signing up to go to your school. And it's bad, folks. It's bad. You know, it's because mom and dad have failed to do their job. Quit thinking the school's going to teach your daughter how to cook. Hello, mom. You're supposed to teach her. Some of y'all, I heard that in the spirits. Y'all be careful. I hear stuff. What? Uh, says Jesus knew their thoughts. That's, that's in the Bible, and that's, a, that's an attribute you can tap into. Trust me, you don't want it, because there's a lot of stupid things people think. I heard some woman go, that's racist. He's being, that's sexist, whatever. I, I don't know, for decades, mom was teaching daughters how to cook, and no, we never th thought it was sexist. We just thought mom's a good cook. Hello? You know, cooking's not a, not a bad thing. We're not saying you're, you can't do anything else. But don't, don't. Yeah, I've met some women that can cook good, and I've met some that can't. Sorry. Your mama didn't teach you. My mom can't cook. Sorry about that generational curse. <laughs> you know, some, we got a, the guy over here, is a, he's a chef. He works at one of the restaurants in town. Doug, he cooks great. I go to his restaurant at least once a week just to get fried okra. Because <laughs> he's one of the few guys that know how to do it right. Man, uh, don't 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 separate a man, a southern man, from his oak right now. <laughs> I'm just fighting words. But listen to this. It says, "I have removed the boundaries of the people." He's done that. I have robbed their treasuries. He's still trying to rob us. I have put down uh, the inhabitants like a valiant man. He, I have found like a, like a, a nest of riches of the people and gathered. As one gathers eggs that are left, I have gathered all the earth. I mean, America's not the only, only place that's having problems. Right. And there was no one to move his wing, open his mouth, or even peep. Now, this is why, this is why I want you to get the Rocky anointing today. I want you walking out of here going, boy, howdy, I'm going I'm to peep like there ain't no peeping going on. You got to say, hey, no, no. I'm praying for the president more today than I ever have. That he don't quit. If I was him, I'd have quit a long time ago. You that just always, I don't like that Trump said this, I don't like Trump said that. Listen, if everybody on the, in the world is calling you and making fun of you and mocking you, maybe you'd have to tweet every once in a while just for your own soul's sake to say, hey! Yeah. <laughs> and when he does that, everybody goes nuts. Trump went, Trump went, I saw it. I, you know, I've already sent it to 20 of my friends. Our president. Well, God bless him, because I'm going to tell you something, I can't do it. I get stink eye from a few of you, and I'm just, I, I'm ready. my sermon's changing. Uh, we're going to talk about hell. I feel led that the Holy Spirit wants to talk about hell and the people that are going there. What happened? He was talking about the joy of the Lord. I have fun up here. There's no, no, no reason why you can't hear the truth. Now, some of y'all got me tuned out because I've used the word Trump like three or four times already. It's not a cuss word. I, I have relatives that get mad at me when we talk politics. I've never seen our country so divided over stuff like this. There is a spirit of antichrist in the world right now that, that's just anti-God. Well, it... This is what the scripture says. That Satan's removed the boundaries and started robbing our treasures. You know what our treasure is? Our children. Yeah. Every mom and dad here, when Jesus comes and you're on the clouds, or you're, if, whether you go by a rapture or the grave, you know what you're looking for in heaven? You're not looking for pearly gates and gold streets. You know what you're looking for? Your kids. You're looking for your children. And not everybody in this room, I know this to be a fact because I'm one of them. Not everybody in this room, you're, all of our children are in the ark of safety. Dad, your son is. Both sons. See, that, 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 that makes you feel good, don't it? Because when you get to heaven, you're looking for Matthew. You're looking for Jason. <sighs> Hallelujah. Because what if they're not there? 
You know, one of the saddest scriptures in the Bible to me is it says in the book of Revelation that God will wipe away the, it says in heaven, he'll wipe away the tears from their eye and there'll be no more sorrow. Who in the world would be crying or sad in heaven? There's no disease. You got a new body. Everybody's young and healthy. There's no war. There's no famine. There's no blindness. No cripples. Every, it's all glorious. So who's crying in heaven? I'll tell you who's crying. Moms and dads who can't find their kids. And I'll tell you something. It says that God will wipe away the tears from your eye. God. Jehovah. The king of the universe. They all create awesome God. Not Jesus. God. Abba. Daddy. Father. God will walk up to you and wipe that tear from your eye. And I'll tell you what I know, I know is going to happen when he does that. He's going to wipe the memory of your son or daughter out of your mind. And they'll, they'll, they'll be as though they never existed. Because you think you could enjoy eternity knowing your son and daughter was lost and somewhere else? No, not a one of us. But heaven is a glorious place and I want everybody to go there. You talk about the lamb will lay down with the lion. You talk about the, every animal on the planet. Nobody's attacking and fighting each other. And You could ride a hippo if you wanted or a rhinoceros or a giraffe, whatever. It's going to be wonderful. I'm going to Hawaii tomorrow. I'm going to celebrate 30 years married to my bride. And boy, we put, we put, yeah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We, we rented a house, not we ain't staying at a motel somewhere. We're doing, we pulled all the stops out, Kevin and I. We, we went, go big or go home. We're going big. You know, you know, you, know, you could, that money could be used to, if you stayed at Motel 6, you could use that money for the gospel. Jesus said, the poor you have with you always, people. You got to learn. Jason learned this right from the beginning. There's times you've got to be extravagant concerning her. Don't always be cheap. No, she's like, Listen to him. Listen to the man. Listen to the man. I didn't think he was that anointed, but boy, how did the anointing just seem to increase when he said that. But guys, seriously, it's amazing what you buy in tools and everything else and toys and stuff, and then when it comes to your wife's anniversary or something, here, baby, some chocolates. And by the way, that dress is fitting a little tight on you. Like, really? Really? You need to be extravagant. One day, a, wo a woman walked in with this alabaster box, expensive perfume, and busted it and started pouring it on Jesus' feet. You know what the disciples said? What a waste. That was expensive. That was a year's wage. That could have been sold, and we could have fed poor people with it. You know what Jesus' response? He said, shut up! What she's doing is valuable. She sees that I'm worth it. If you don't see that Jesus is worth it, you haven't met Jesus yet. Religion ain't worth squat, but, okay? But if, if, when you meet Jesus, I mean true Jesus. Not the religious Jesus, not the denominational Jesus, not all. When you meet the Son of the living God, that when he was hanging on the cross, he called your name out to God. That Jesus. When you fall in love with him, there ain't nothing you won't do to give to him. So that woman that broke that, he said, you know what? You're going to be, when they write about this, you're going to be mentioned. You know, that story is the only story that's mentioned in all four Gospels. He said, it's going to be mentioned as a memorial. Sometimes we've got to stop and say, this is worth it. Husbands, your wife is worth it. You have the power to give her value and premium more than anybody on the planet. And if you withhold that, shame on you. Because you ask her to marry you. And she said, yes, I'll join myself to your world. I'll be your help meet. I'll support you. I'll, we'll, we'll be in this together. And we'll build this glorious thing that God calls a family. And the two, you know, Eve... They were a couple till Eve came along. When Eve came along, they became a family. 
It's the fruit of their love. See, that's the treasury, people. Satan's been stealing the treasures from us. And it's time that we don't just sit there and whistle Dixie and act like, well, you know, I voted. What else can you want me to do? Well, how about praying? You know God hears your prayers? You know there's been more prayer in the last few months for America than, uh, than in a long time? Jonathan Kahn had a big, big prayer movement going on, and Billy Graham's son, uh, Franklin, had one going on at the same time. D.C. was full, full of people praying. Not just praying, repenting. God, forgive us for not handling things right. Forgive us for allowing on our watch these things Keep putting in people in office that keep doing things. I want to tell you something. I, I have a new word for abortion. It's called child sacrifice. Some of you go, I don't like that. Well, good. That's why I picked it. Because that's what it really is. We're sacrificing children. See, abortion almost. Abortion. If some of y'all had them, you know what? It's, it can be forgiven. The good news is you'll see that child again in heaven. Isn't that awesome? You don't get to heaven, some little kid going to come up, Hey, Dad. How you doing? <laughs> Praise God. I mean, oh, God, don't throw them away. When life conceives, when a moment of conception, God is on it. Hallelujah. Not on my watch. Satan going to think he's going to keep stealing from from us parents and grandparents. We're going to stop it. So, well, what can you do? All you can do is vote. And that don't seem like it does much. Well, that's all you can do in the natural. But I'll tell you what. There, how many of you can appeal to a higher court? There's a Supreme Court. Well, there's one even above the Supreme Court. I was one time in court asking to testify for a, as a character witness for a friend of mine. And this attorney asked me, he says, are you good friends with this person? I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir. Are you so good a friend that you would lie for him? I said, no, sir. I said, I looked at the judge and said, no offense, ma'am. I answer to a higher authority than you. And she looked at me and she said, I answer to that same authority. That was a good, I mean, I, I left, I, I was blessed by that. See, there's people that think the buck stops with them. We all answer to somebody higher than us. And, there is, and there's not one thing that's happened that he didn't see it. In Matthew 23, anybody get anything? Are you getting encouraged? Because I'm trying to encourage it. No, you made me, you brought me down. I was feeling okay till I came this morning. Well, lunch is coming. <laughs> you can get happy again in a minute. Listen, in, in, in Matthew 23, 37, Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you, to gather your children together as a hen, gather, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Here's what I want you to hear today. Don't stop praying. Still be willing. Right. See, God's looking for agreement on the earth. If, ever, if, all, if, all of, if, all, if all of we think our responsibility is, is to vote, put the sticker on us, walk around town. Yeah, I voted. Yep, I voted. I've done my part. It's over. Well, I don't know about you. I've been more rowdy the last few days than I was way before the election. I didn't mail mine in, I walked it in because I wanted to walk it in personally. If you mailed it in, God bless you. But I walked mine in. That, just thank God you, you voted. But when they're telling me my vote don't count, I was like, oh, I'll tell you what, I beg to differ because I looked at them. I ain't stupid. I looked at rallies and I saw tons of people at one and I saw a handful at the other and I'm thinking, how is it this close? 
Am I the only person that looked at this and went, well, you know, the other supporters were COVID people and they were all just wearing masks sitting at home whistling Dixie. I don't believe that for a moment. See, this spirit, the spirit of the age right now thinks, we're all, thinks all of us are dumb. And they're going to control us and we, they know what's best for us. And stuff. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to live for Jesus. It was difficult. To, I've been through a lot of administration. I've been in the gospel almost 50 years. I've been under a lot of presidents. Some I liked, some I didn't. But I had to pray for all of them. But you know what? People still got saved. People still got delivered. People still got set free. It's happened. And it's going to continue to happen. But if it can happen a little easier, I'm all, I'm all for that. <laughs> Anybody ever seen these places around town where you rent tools? God bless those people. They got all the cool tools that when, if you have to break up concrete, yes, you can use a sledgehammer and be at it all day, or you can go rent a jackhammer. When we built this sanctuary, we put those columns back there. We had to break, bust up the concrete, and we tried with a with a sledgehammer, because we have some young bucks in this church. Of him. Give me a hammer, Pastor. We need the mind of Christ. <laughs> this concrete is hard, and I've gave it all I got, and I better put a dent in it. We need, we need the mind of the Lord, which is inter the interpretation is we need to go rent some equipment, <laughs> some power tools. How many of y'all like power tools? I did a sermon one time about the power of God, and I used different tools up here. I had a handsaw, and I said, we got to cut uh, 150 two-by-fours. Now, this is, your, this is your assignment. You can use this, 150, or you can use, I had a plug-in power, and cut right through it, and then I had a cordless. I had all these different kinds of saws, and I said, which one do you want? Well, this was a no-brainer. I'll, I'll take the power tool. For twenty dollars, and it was, because it's. Why would you do it on your own? How I many? Oh, we don't have to do it on our own. Right. I mean, oh, God's the power we need to tap into. Last I checked, He's still God. But it says, "But you are not willing. Don't give up to fear." Here's my definition of fear. Fear means. False evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R. False evidence. Well, they got the bounds, they got the votes. What else can we do that appears to be real? Well, that's fine. Just find all the other votes that are in trash cans and dumpsters and count those. Stay in faith, people. Daniel chapter 10, it says, you know, he was praying about something for three weeks, 21 days. And then the answer came. Then God spoke to him and said, Then he, God, said to me, Daniel, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. How many of oh, God's heard your prayers? He's heard mine and heard Alvin's. Anybody else he heard? He's he heard your prayers? Or is it just a formality we do because, you know, we hold hands at church and somebody quotes Second Chronicles, Chronicles 7, 14. If my, come on, are called by my name, will humble themselves. We do that thing. Now, that thing is the word of God. And it, it's either true or it's not. And if we do humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways, he will hear from heaven and he will heal the land. I'm 65. Anybody 55 or older, you know this land needs healing. It's always been like this. No, it has not. It has not always been like this. You ever watch Andy and Mayberry, the Andy Griffith show? That's how I grew I, that, I'm Opie. I'm same age, wore some of the same clothes. I watch episodes. I had that shirt. <laughs> I had that jacket. But it was that kind of an in innocence back. When I went to elementary school, you, dr you rode your bike to school, you got off of it and went inside. You didn't lock it, bolt it, chain it, take the tube out, put it in your pocket. Hello? And, when you, and you didn't s walk around recess going, I think it's still there. I don't know. 
It's on the other side of the school. I can't go over there to see. You didn't worry about it being there. When you got out of school, you went to the bike rack and got your bike and you went home. Some of y'all look at me like, that happened? Where'd you live? Christianityville? <laughs> <laughs> no, I lived in Otay, California. <gasps> yeah. There was a time it was safe. It ain't always been like this. He said, the day you prayed, I heard you. Isn't that cool? Your words were heard. And he says, and I have come because of your words. How I many of oh, he's heard our prayers? And in the next two and a half months, he's coming for those words. Now, I'm going to believe that something's going to happen in the next two, two and a half months. I'm going to keep praying till January 20th. How many will agree that you'll keep praying for the next two and a half months? Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to say keep praying for the president we have right now. Because he's still in office, so keep praying. Pray he don't quit. One thing I like about this boy, he don't quit. I had never met a man so, th so thick-skinned and so... I would have gave up a long time ago. I don't know, everybody thinks they can throw stones at the man. We could not take near what he's gone through. And not accomplish as much as he's accomplished. He ain't done nothing. That's because you listen to the wrong source. That's right. He's done tons. Israel's in a better place than it's been in a long time. He's done things with Israel. You know, God says, if you bless Israel, I'll bless you. Right. This country's been blessed because of that. In a pandemic, the economy's still doing good. Yeah. I mean, uh, what? H hello? Sometimes we act like, I, they said it's not, so they must be right, because whatever they say, it's the truth. We got to, people, we got to keep thinking for ourselves. Right? You know I love you. You better be glad you took up the offer, man, because right now I wouldn't give you a dime. <laughs> well, you don't give it to me anyways. This goes for the work of God. Hello. Hallelujah. If some of y'all are having trouble with this message, you need to search your heart out. Why is, I, I had this talk with my son the other day. One of them, I have seven six boys and a girl, one of them I sat down and said, you know what, I am tired of you getting so angry and mad every time you hear the word Trump. I said, I want to tell you something. This man, Biden and Trump are two men we'll probably never meet. And I refuse to let this kind of strife be in my house over two people. I said, son, Obama was in there eight years. And I said, we didn't have strife. I prayed for him. I didn't vote for him. But this is ridiculous, the spirit that's on, that's out there right now. You need to search your heart. You ain't supposed to hate, hate anybody. Right. Well, you can hate the devil. You got my permission to hate the devil and hate him with a passion. Because <laughs> he is, we used to sing a song back in, my, in the Jesus day. It was called, we were saying, Satan is a liar, gonna burn in a lake of fire. Whoa, Satan is a liar. It's a happy song. Gonna burn in a lake of fire. <laughs> Satan is a liar, gonna burn in a lake of fire. He's gonna bake in a lake of fire. Yeehaw! All his screaming demons gonna burn like crispy critters. Yeah, all his scream. Yeah, isn't that a great song? I had a guy come up to me after church one time, kind of teary-eyed. Uh, I didn't like that song because you know, I'm praying the devil gets saved. It's like, well, that's well, your wasted prayers. He is, he's an enemy, people. He hates everybody on the planet. He wants everybody to be miserable. Amen? Some of you are going, your worship definitely has increased since those days. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, mean, I think it has too. One more scripture and we'll be dismissed. Thank God. I don't know if I could take any more of this. I didn't sign up for this. I came to watch a baby get dedicated, and I'm having to hear stuff I don't even want to hear. Well, some of us do. You know, sometimes I have to listen to things that I don't want to hear either. But you know, I don't go home. Now, if you go home and throw darts at my picture or whatever and stuff, or go online and say nasty things, whatever, whatever you got to do to make yourself feel okay. But you know, the Bible says you got to give an account for every word. 
And here's a freak out. The Bible says the books were open. And they were judged according to all that was written in the books. What if one of those books is Facebook? You realize everything you've posted out there, you're going to have to give an account. Oh my gosh. Yeah, repent and quit doing it. Right. How do y'all go to this church? This guy just makes you feel like homemade sin on a popsicle stick. <laughs> In Exodus chapter 14, we know the story. Moses, they're at the Red Sea. The enemy's coming. God just put a cloud between the two because they're just nipping at their heel. And it's, they're like, way to go, Mo. Brought us right down here. We're all, <laughs> we're all going to die. It's bad. It's really bad. And then they started saying, it was better in Egypt. You know, when they were in Egypt, people, they were slaves. They didn't have any rights. They didn't have any freedoms. They were slaves. So they're... You know, sometimes the word of the Lord is shut up. And I'd say that in a, in a I could say in King James, shut up it. <laughs> it sounds more biblical. Hey man, shut up it. But sometimes you have to, if you can't say something good, don't say nothing. Because you're going to give an account for every word. And Moses said to the people, Exodus 14, 13, do not be afraid. See, I want to encourage some of y'all that are afraid that all your labor and all the stuff that you've been praying seems like for naught. No, don't be afraid. Stand still. That means shut up. It doesn't mean stand still, not move. Because the people were complaining. It was basically saying, don't quit talking. You're, you're undermining the very thing that God's trying to do. You're going to talk yourself out of it if you don't shut up. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Come January 20, two men, one, of, one of two men are going to put their hand on a Bible and promise they're going to take care of us. Now I'm going to pray. I think you all already know who that is. But I'm going to pray till that day happens. Now if that day happens, people. And it ain't, it ain't, it ain't Mr. Trump. I'm going to still pray for that other guy. Because my hope does not come from the White House. My hope comes from heaven. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in, were fixing to be thrown in a fiery furnace. And the guy says, look, I'll give you one, one more chance to save your skin. Just admit you were wrong. And bow down and to this image idol we've created. And we'll call it, we'll call it square. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, Be it known to you, King Nebuchadnezzar, we hear what you're saying. And he says, Our God is able. And we believe he's willing. But if he don't, if he don't, we ain't bowing down. That's what, that's, get the eye of the tiger, get your, get your game face on, ball up your fist, go home, take a rubber hose, beat a tree, whatever you got to do. So I just heard a green a tree hugger person go, not the trees. <laughs> find, a, find a post, something, asphalt, cement, whatever. It's amazing how we'll all go around and try to push a well back in the water, but we abort babies. Well, come on, let's pick a side. Let's, let's, put, you know, let's find out what the true value of life is. Well, we're all God's people. You know, cats are people too. No, cats are cats. I don't care if you put on a sweater and they play piano and do all those kind of stuff. They're still a cat. When God made animals, he said this was good. When he made plants, he said this was good. When he made man, he made a distinction, people. We need to make that distinction. When he made man, he said this is very good. Right. Look at the word very. No, that means something with God. Because that's made in the likeness and image of God. Everybody in this room is made in the likeness and image of God. A lot of these things you think and feel, they're not just... You, that, that conscience, that thing that says, that ain't right. If you've ever committed fornication, all up to the act, you, were, you didn't hear anything, but 
I've got to accomplish this one thing. Did you ever notice when you got done, how, how you felt? <sighs> Golly, I feel so bad. Where'd that come from? Where'd that conviction come from? You don't have to be a Christian to be convicted. Before I became a Christian, I was a fornicator. And I felt bad every time. Well, I knew something about it. I had no power. Remember I told you this devil guy is a stinker? He's got power. He's got some forces that really work against us. But you know, when I met Jesus, you know why I love Jesus? He gives you the power to overcome evil. I love him for that more than anything else. So I, cause I can say no, like Forrest Gump, no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to fornicate no more. I love Jesus. And I tell you, y'all might not think that's a big deal, but I, I'm pretty happy about that. My wife's ecstatic. She likes that. I like being able to say no. Isn't that wonderful? And not just to that, it's every other sin out there. I don't need a button to tell me I'm sober. I'm sober. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Let's get some bigger goals in life. How about telling us, I led 10 people to Jesus last year. Woo-hoo! That's a, that's, a, that's a badge you want to wear. He tells them, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It says, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom, I oh, wanted to say Democrats, but the Lord wouldn't let me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> for, for the progressive. <laughs> for the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more. The Lord will fight for you. This is at a place right now, body of Christ, where the Lord has to fight for us. Because we've done did what we can do. Now the rest of us have got to get on our knees and fight like a man. Hit your knees. That's when you're the strongest, when you hit your knees and say, okay, God, I've done everything you told me to do. And now it's in, it's, I'm appealing to heaven. Lord, you need to go before me and make the way straight. You, if it's your will, thy will be done. Well, Kevin and I were talking about this the other day. How many know God don't always get his way? The Bible says it's his will that none perish, but we know that people perish. But it's his will that none perish. People perish every day. Lost for eternity. He don't always get his way because he gave us this wonderful gift called free will. And I like it because it's a choice. I love God as a, I came to church today as an act of my will. I came here today because I love God. Some of y'all might have came because you love Matthew and Marcia. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. They're cool people. I know why you love them. And you know, you know what? They wanted me to dedicate them because like, hello. <laughs> cool. Look in the dictionary under cool. Oh, it's a picture of me. <laughs> Gosh, this guy's full of himself. Thank you. You know, the Bible says you love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love you, you can't love us. Right. Do I love myself? Yes, sir. I love the work of God, the grace of God. I know who I used to be. I was selfish as the day is long. I was not a nice person before I met Jesus. When I met Jesus, he put love in my heart. And oh my goodness, it changed me forever. I like this person that God has made. I live with me all the time. I'm, I should like this guy. I'm stuck with him. You should love yourself. And you, not just, well, I love, I love people the best I can. Well, then you're ripping us off if it's, we're getting your love when you can have God's love. Jason, don't ever, don't ever compromise and give her, you get the best of my love. Come on, you and the eagles can sing that, but it's, let's give her, give her the best of his love. Because your love will run out. It's carnal. Everybody's love runs out. But his love is renewed every morning. His mercy is renewed every morning. You know every morning God says, do over. Wake up. You get a do over. Hallelujah. Yesterday's gone. Let's try it again. Let's, let's, let's get a do over. Aren't you glad for a do over? I wasn't that happy yesterday. I kind of had, I had to, this morning I was, Got up earlier, I was sitting in the hot tub. I like to, I have, I mean, God have good talks in the hot tub. I don't know about you, where you, I don't know where you pray. I try to pray on gravel on my knees to so show my, well, if, he's not impressed with our pain. He's only impressed with the pain that Jesus went through on the cross. So any dead works we're doing to try to impress God is a waste of time. So you can pray in a hot tub and he hears you just as well. But I found myself repenting this morning for my attitude yesterday. 
because it was just, I didn't have a good attitude yesterday. A lot of stuff was going on, um, and it just, people were being hard-headed. You know, how many of y'all don't like to reap where you haven't sown? You ever notice how some people can sometimes affect your life in really adverse ways? Well, that was yesterday. Not so much for me, but my wife and her friends. A whole day spent because somebody's being a knothead. Brother Mike, don't call people knothead. Okay, bogerhead. I'm not going to find a nicer word. Because some people just have problems. Some people are selfish. Some people don't care about others. And I used to be one of those guys. And so did you. The Bible says, and you had the quickened who once were dead. Hello, dead people. Night of the living dead's not a new thing. We were all dead. Before you met Jesus, you didn't have life in you. Oh, you had stuff going on physically, and you could see and hear and eat food and all that kind of, that kind of life, but not real life. When God says life, he's talking about his quality. See, I used to just exist. Now I have the love of God and the Spirit of God flowing through me, and it gives you life. That word life is Zoe, Z-O-E, and it means God life. This compassion that my wife demonstrated yesterday for 11 hours is not normal. Is not normal. Because sometimes you're doing things for people that have done this for a long time and they're not, they're, they haven't quit. And it's like, I'm, I'm like, honey, I'm your husband. I'm trying to cover you and protect you. Don't waste time on people that have proven they're not going to change. But see, that's me. See, I'm just exposing myself. What's your name, bro? Yeah, Patrick. I like your beard. I just had to... So yeah, he, right in the middle of a sermon, he starts, starts talking about beards. Oh, this guy's... I don't think they taught that at Bible school. Well, that's because I didn't go to Bible school. That explains so much. No, I didn't go. Well, that's obvious. Thank you. But, um, no, I've just been paying attention to you today because I, I see things in the Spirit. I see people that are listening more than with their ears. It's like the Lord, the Holy Spirit lights on people and goes, this one. I'm talking to this one. It's not, is it everybody? No, I wish it was. But there's times he just says, pay attention. He told me to pray for you before, before I even got out here this morning. Okay, you know, just, aren't you glad I did? Yeah, because she's going, that was a good prayer. I like that prayer. I like the part of the, if y'all go and have a burger afterwards, and what, what part of the service did you like? I like the part of where he talked about extravagant love for your... <laughs> For your, for your spouse. I thought that was so of God. He said that? Oh, yeah. We're buying the tape. We're getting, we don't have tape. We have CDs. And we actually don't have CDs. You have to go on YouTube and watch it again. It's on YouTube? Yeah, it's permanently there for as long as you need access to that. Listen, body of Christ. It's not over. So keep praying. It's stay in faith, if nothing else. Don't throw your hands, well, I prayed and it didn't happen. I guess we're just going to have to, whatever comes our way, we are the salt of the earth. We, we have the power to change things. Are there, do you not know people in your life? I've had effect on you and your family. We have the power to change things around us. Yes. This book is not a fairy tale. It's reality. You know, the... It is the truth. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You know what that word truth? The Greeks don't have a word for The word for truth is reality. You're not living the real world until you step into the Jesus world. Because it's the real world. And he's coming back. You think? See, when I say that, people go, yes. And some of you go, really? Like, soon? If you're fearful that you're not ready to meet the Lord, that's on you. Because he has made everything available. You gotta you gotta fight to not see something spiritual on TV. I mean, you got hundred chan thousand channels, and there's a bunch of them that talk about Jesus on there. He's been doing everything in his power to get through to you. Say, hey, just check it out. That's why I love the movie The, the Chosen. 
I think is the best Jesus movie ever made, and I've seen all of them. And it makes you want to follow that guy. Because you watch it and go, if Jesus is really like that, I would follow him. And I want to tell you something, he's more than that. They're doing a good job with the, with the portraying his nature and character and his, his compassion. But I want to tell you something, he's an actor. He's not the Messiah. I've seen him. Me and him had a conversation one time. Lasted a half hour. You sh everybody should have a personal encounter with Jesus. It will change your life forever. But I want to tell you something. He's worth following. In regards to who's our president, I'm going to keep following Jesus. I can't. I heard this one guy, Sid Roth, the other day said, people were calling in going, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know about, I'm about to give up on my Christian faith. If that's all it takes to get you out of the race is somebody changing in, in the office of the White House, you ain't got a race. Right? I'm going to follow Jesus no matter who's in, that, in there. Come on. Hello? It shouldn't, have, it shouldn't shipwreck your faith. I'm still going to have joy. I'm still, I'm still going to be in love with myself. No offense, I like me. I'm with me all day long. I crack myself up. I, 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 have jo I tell myself jokes. I'm going, oh man, that was awesome. I don't know if you guys do that, but I, you got to like who you are. Some of y'all just trying the best not to think about yourself because they're all just bad. I'm just a mess. I'm just a... Who are you listening to? Remember? The deceiver, liar. Hear Jesus. He loves you, man. He thinks you're awesome. And he's with you everywhere you go. You think he is? Oh, yeah. You know, the Bible says, I stand at the door and knock. You know... I think Jesus just started knocking on the door of your heart the night you got saved or when you went to church and you heard the message. You, can't, you know how many times in your life that he was knocking and you just didn't open the door? He was offering change. He was offering forgiveness. He was offering peace. And you, I got this. I got this. This too shall pass. I can weather this out. And he's like, I didn't create you to weather life. I created you, to, I created you that you would have life. And have it more abundantly. Not just get through it with as few scrapes and bumps as possible. I just feel like there's people here today who might want to make peace with Jesus. I mean, it's that kind of message, isn't it? It turned into an evangelistic kind of thing. When did that happen? I was coming for a, ba a baby. Sh I thought I'd be safe. I go to Christmas plays and watch little kids in bathrobes. And I was standing in the field and behold, the deputy. Those are always safe. Oh, baby dedication, that's got to be safe. What else? How could, how could you get convicted at a, at a baby? That's like going to a baby shower. If Jesus shows up, there's conviction. I can't talk about how awesome Jesus is and not give you an opportunity to meet him. Because I just can't pretend everybody in here knows him. Because I don't think everybody does. Assumption to assume is the lowest form of communication. Never assume anything. Ask. You have not because you ask not. I want people to have peace with God. I want you that are parents to know that your children are going to be there when you get there. That is my biggest prayer. I ain't worried about rewards and crowns and all that stuff. We all get to lay that at his feet anyways. I'm looking for my kids. That's all I want. To, that's, that's the most important thing to me. I don't want them to be a memory wiped away. That's pretty sobering. And some of y'all, I don't think I've ever heard that before. That kind of brought me down. No, it's not supposed to bring you down. It's supposed to wake you up. You're not supposed to go through life pretending everybody's a believer. Everybody's going to heaven when they die because that's who God is. God is love and everything's peachy cool and that's what everybody tells us. You know, the Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you reap. We all have, we all know when we're doing it wrong. I did. No, you don't have to be a Christian to know right from wrong. So, why don't you bow your heads just for a moment. Thank you, Lord. If you're here today... And you have felt something in this room that you didn't feel before you came in. Because I believe that we sang about it today. In your presence, 
in your presence. See, the presence of God is in this place. You know why we assemble every Sunday and meet? Because we want to get in that presence. Because then that presence, hope comes alive. Faith is energized. Our souls that are cast down get lifted up. There's a lot of disturbing things going on all around us. If you're here today and, and you just feel like, I know about, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Brother Mike. I feel that presence. You know that presence isn't telling you you're a scumbag, you're a terrible person. That's not Jesus. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. And knock. If any man hears my voice and opens that door, I'll come in. Well, what door is he talking about? He's talking about the door of your heart. The control center of your life. You know, true repentance is coming to the end of yourself saying, Lord, I'm, I'm making a mess of my life. All the decisions and choices I'm making don't always seem to work out. And I, I don't know how to make any better ones. You know, we're all broke. You grew up in broken homes and broken marriages and all. We're all broke on some level. How are you going to make right choices when you grew up wrong? In a wrong, broken world. Even if you grew, grew up in a Christian home and everything was godly around you, the world is still broke. If you're here today and you say, Brother Mike, I, I want peace. I want peace, the peace you're talking about today. I want peace. If you want to make peace with God, Slip your hand up, and I want to pray for you. You want to make peace with God. I see that hand. Is there anybody else? You want to make peace with God. You're t quit doing it on your own. I feel like there's believers here this morning that are raising their hand because you just realize, you, you realize today you're still making choices and you're still the boss, and that doesn't, that don't work. You can't be the boss. We used to have a banner in the church here that said, give it to him. And him's capitalized. Give it to him whose right it is. If you're tired of making a mess of your life, give it to Jesus and let him take the lordship of your life. Let him start checking in with him about decisions and stuff. And watch, watch where he leads you. He'll lead you out of the wilderness into literally the promised land. He'll make your life way better. Hallelujah. It's time to make peace with God. You that raised your hand, just stand up where you are. You don't have to come down here. We're just going, but I want you to stand up for Jesus. All right, just stand to your feet real quick. You raised your hand. You said, I'm, I want to make peace with God. Even if you're a Christian and you just heard something today that spoke to your heart and said, I'm not, I'm not letting Jesus have the full control. Then that's okay. Let's give it to him today. Let's give him the right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. You that, are, you that are standing, we're gonna, I'm going to pray for you right now. No, I want you to pray this with me. Some of y'all raised your hand and you couldn't stand. I don't know why, but that's okay. You can still pray this prayer. Maybe you were just raising your hand in agreement. I, that's okay too. You're agreeing with what I said. But to you, you that are standing, we're going to pray this prayer because your words, Jesus said, by your words you're justified, by your words you're condemned. You have the power through your words to make peace with God or to reject Jesus. It's all in your, it's not on him, it's on you. So you standing right now, I want to pray this with you. I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I humble myself. I acknowledge my way's not working. I want to give it to you. It's your right. You bought me with your own blood. On the cross. I'm surrendering. My rights. To you. Lead me and guide me. From this day forward. Give me a heart of referral. That I will check in with you. On a regular basis. Thank you Lord. For delivering me. From myself. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, several of y'all prayed that prayer. And I want to tell you something. Something really did cool happen because you're getting free from you. Some of y'all walked in here not so happy. Some of you are going to walk out not so happy. Do you know whose fault that is? Not mine. I'm real careful about blood being on my hands. 
You know, being a preacher is a fearful thing because I have to give an account. Every time I step up here, I have to give an account for every word. And if you walk in here and your life's miserable and you walk out of here, if I didn't tell you the truth, then your blood's on my hand. But if I told you the truth and you didn't respond or, or, or act on it, that's on you. That'll be one day in judgment where Jesus said, you know, I don't remember you knocking on my door. He'll say, oh, really? Remember you went to that Matthew and Marcia's dedication? I knocked that Sunday. And he'll tell you all the other times in your life where he knocked and you just said no. See, I'm radical. I know I'm radical. I look radical. I wear radical. I mean, I just don't look like a normal preacher. And people say sometimes, man, I didn't think, I didn't think you was a preacher. Thanks. I think that is a... I don't want to be that cookie cutter out of Bible school kind of guy. Um... Because I want to be the guy that loves people and tells them the truth. That's who I want to be. And I just want you to know, some of y'all today, for whatever reason, you had trouble and you're warring with something going on inside. Maybe you need some more time. Maybe you need to sit down with me or somebody and say, I need some splaining. Lucy, you got some splaining to do. And maybe, maybe you need to have me sit down and do some splaining. Because, you know, when you give your life to Jesus, that's not something that you, that you take lightly. That's not something that's flippant. Because he's not flippant. He didn't flippantly die on a cross. That was well thought out. And I love him. He's awesome. Did I tell you how awesome he is? I did, because he is so awesome. I'm not ashamed. And I believe before he comes back, it's going to be real evident who... Who loves him and who's on fire and who's not ashamed to say, I love Jesus. Some people have find it easier to say, I love Jesus, than I voted for Trump. <laughs> Trump gives you more persecution than Jesus at this point right now, but that's okay. You know, I'm not ashamed to call him brethren. I just love God. I love all you guys. I love you. I'll teach you that song about screaming demons. It's a classic. It's a classic. All right, you're dismissed in Jesus' name. Turn around, hug somebody, look somebody, and go, man, I think every word he said was for you. <laughs>